So this video is going to um, introduce you to the ideas of, as you can see, orbital representations and electron configurations. So what you want to do is get out the organizer that is page 303. Make sure that you have a pencil to take notes with. Um, we're not going to go through the entire organizer. We're only going to do the front page. But you can follow along. Notice that in the top here there are spaces to take notes. Um, and then you might actually need to take some notes towards the bottom of the page as well. I've got five terms that I'm going to um, share with you guys as we go through this. Um, so both orbital representations and electron configurations are ways for us to show how electrons are actually getting put into the electron cloud, what principal energy level, what sublevel, what orbital, what spin, and so forth. So it's a way of visualizing the electron cloud arrangement. Um, so let's start with introducing you to the ideas of what electron configuration and electro um, orbital representations are. So first off, um, orbital representations are actually the most detailed. So they're going to provide kind of exact locations and details about where the electrons are going. Um, notice that um, boxes are going to represent orbitals. If you looked at the organizer, you can see these boxes represent orbitals. Um, a set of boxes represents a sublevel. What we're going to do is we're going to, into the boxes, we're going to put arrows. So an arrow is going to represent an electron. And then the direction of the arrow, we're going to write either up arrows or down arrows. Those are going to represent the spins. So orbital representations are actually the most detailed if you have a question wanting to know about why something is happening based on the electron cloud, the best thing to do is always write the orbital representation. The other thing, electron configurations are faster, but they're not as detailed. So use orbital representations whenever you have to figure out why elements are behaving the way they're behaving, because the orbital representation is going to show you. The other way, the shorter way, like I said, is something called electron configuration. It is faster, but it's less detailed. And so you're going to, um, essentially, to do electron configuration, you are going to write the name of the sublevel. And then you're going to use a superscript. So it's kind of like an exponent. You're going to use a superscript to show the number of electrons that are in that sublevel. We don't get to see individual orbitals. We don't get to see spins. You don't get to see technically individual arrows. Um, so it's a little less detailed. But Again, it's a little more convenient when you're just trying to very quickly think about what the electron arrangement looks like. All right, there are three other terms um, that are lower on the sheet that we will get to. But for the time being, um, note on your organizer. What we're going to do is we're going to go through elements 1 through argon is all the way down to the bottom, elements 1 through 18. Um, and we're going to write their electron configurations. We're going to learn those other three terms as we go. Um, and then that'll be the end of it. Then we'll pick up um, in class. So um, one of the three rules that I need to share with you right away is something called the Aufbau Principle. The Aufbau Principle basically says that electrons are going to go in the lowest energy level available. So for example, we know that the 1s is the only sublevel in the first principal energy level. It's closest to the nucleus. Therefore, it is going to have the lowest energy. So it will get the electrons first. So hydrogen, when we get there, the uh, one electron for hydrogen is going to go into the 1s. So that's what the Aufbau principle says. So let's do it. Um, let's do hydrogen. So here's your organizer. So the electron configuration for hydrogen. Now, I am a type A personality, so my electrons are always going to be up spin first, um, so an up arrow first, and I'm always going to start on the left side. You can put these electrons wherever you want. You can have a down arrow. But for the 1s for hydrogen, there's one electron, so I'm going to put that one electron in the 1s. Now, what you see me doing is I'm doing um, half an arrow, um, you're going to understand why as we go through there. It's a lot faster to do a half-headed arrow than it is a full-headed arrow. Uh, so I'm trying to save myself some time.
So this is hydrogen's orbital representation. One electron in the 1s. Again, I always draw an up arrow. You can draw a down arrow if you want. But then the electron configuration, um, it's in the 1s. So we're going to say 1s. And there's only one electron there. So there's going to be a superscript of 1. So 1s1 is the way we're going to write it. Simple as that. Okay, if we move on to helium, helium now has two electrons. Um, and so that gets us into um, the next rule. You know this one already. Um, so let me just slide this up. You know the next rule because it is the Pauli exclusion principle. So the Pauli exclusion principle says if you have two electrons in an orbital, they have to have different spins. So for helium, helium's going to get an up arrow and a down arrow because both electrons have to go in the 1s based upon the alpha principle, but they have to have opposite spins. So one up arrow, one down arrow to show the two spins, and then the electron configuration becomes 1s2. Okay, that finishes us for the 1s. Now I can go on to lithium. So lithium is going to have the first two electrons in the 1s, but where's that third electron going to go? It's got to go in the highest energy level, um, or the it's got to go in the next highest energy level, so it's got to go in the 2s. So again, I tend to write an up arrow. You can do whatever you want. Um, but there's the electron configuration for lithium. And then it becomes 1s2, 2s1. So I have to write both the 1s2 and the 2s1 in order to show the full um, lithium electron configuration. And we can go along with beryllium. Four electrons now. The second electron has to fill up still the 2s. So we get 1s2, 2s2. Don't get too ahead of yourselves because there's one more rule that we have to do. And you might goof up if you go too fast. So just wait. I'll let you know when you can go faster. All right, once we get to boron, now we've got five electrons. So the first two will go in the 1s, the second two will go in the 2s, and now where does that third one go? It has to go in the 2p. But notice the p has three boxes because there's three orbitals in a p sublevel. You can have that electron in any of the orbitals. It doesn't matter. All three of these boxes are equal in energy, so that electron can go anywhere. But me, with my type A personality, I always put it just in the left, the far left one, upspin. Okay, now you can also, I'm going to just bring this in a little closer. It feels like it's really hard to see. Um, you can put it anywhere you want, but again, I just typically do the first box. So then electron configuration is giving 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Okay, pretty simple. Here's where the third rule comes in, so don't jump ahead to carbon. The third rule is what we call... Hun's rule. Okay, so Hun's rule says that electrons don't pair up in a sublevel until each orbital has one electron. So basically, electrons are going to fill empty orbitals first. So um, let's head back to the electron configurations page. And you are going to see we are now at carbon. Move this a little bit so you guys can see things. We are now doing carbon. Um, so carbon has one, two, three, four, five, just like boron, but now it's got a sixth one. So that sixth electron has to go in one of the two empty orbitals based upon Hun's rule. So again, I just kind of put it in the next box and give it an up arrow. It can be a down arrow. It doesn't matter. Whatever is comfortable for you, you do. So then the electron configuration, however, does not show Hun's rule. You get 1s2. 2s2, 2p, whoops, 2p2, and that's all you get. So you don't know, unless you remember Hun's rule, that those two electrons are in different orbitals. Now you've learned everything. So we're going to really quickly go through the, the last one, and I'm going to actually have you guys do stuff further down. So if I get to nitrogen, now I've got one more electron. Where's that electron going? According to Hun's rule, it has to fill that empty orbital. So now nitrogen has three half-filled orbitals, um, but electron configuration doesn't always show that. All it is is 2p3. When I get to oxygen, 
where is that one electron going to go? I've got to now pair it up. So now that each orbital is half filled, now oxygen gets one filled orbital. But again, electron configuration simply says 2p4. If I go to fluorine, now you get in the pattern. I'm going to have another orbital that's filled. And finally, if I get to neon, all of them are filled. So fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay, now P is filled up, so now where am I going to go? Well, yep, the 3S. So that next box represents the 3S and the 3P. So fill in the rest of those rows. So go from sodium, oops, go from sodium through argon, um, filling in the 3S and the 3Ps. And so pause this video and then we'll come back and we'll spot check. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to do practice, um, you can double check yourselves. Um, note that the first two elements, magnesium and sodium, are going to have the 3S being actively occupied. When we move over to aluminum, now the 3P is going to be occupied. Take note, silicon is going to have two orbitals with one electron each. Phosphorus is going to have three orbitals with one electron each. And then when we get to sulfur, then we can start pairing things up chlorine, argon. Note that the electron configuration simply increases by one electron in each of the sublevels that we're actively filling, um, but you don't get to see those spins. So that's a start to doing electron configuration. Like I said, when we get to class, we will um, continue with the rest of the periodic table, um, but at least you have the basics. Um, all right, thanks for watching.